Okay, so now let us look at another example. So let me show you another example of Shannon wavelets. So Shannon wavelets, let me just describe what are these wavelets. So very, very uh, widely used in signal processing. So Shannon wavelets are, are wavelets, the function psi, these wavelets are the function psi whose Fourier transform, whose Fourier transform satisfies the following condition. So, I have that the transform of this wavelet psi hat of omega is nothing but the characteristic function over some interval i and this interval i is the union of this these two intervals. So, negative 2 pi to pi union interval from pi to 2 pi. Okay. So, what if I were to plot, if I were to plot my my Fourier transform of the Shannon wavelet, I see that the Fourier transform of the Shannon wavelet is from pi to 2 pi, from pi to 2 pi, this becomes this becomes 1 and from, from negative pi to negative 2 pi, this also is 1 and otherwise it is 0. So, that is the, the Fourier transform of the Shannon wavelet, which means that my, my Shannon wavelet psi of t is the Fourier inverse, it is the Fourier inverse of psi hat of omega and by the definition of Fourier inverse, this will be equal to 1 by 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the power i omega t times psi hat omega d omega. Now, notice that this, this function is only 1 in 2 of the intervals, otherwise it is 0 everywhere. So, what I get is the following new sets of integrals. I see that this integral infinite integral breaks down into two finite intervals negative 2 pi to negative pi e to the power i omega t d omega plus integral from pi to 2 pi e to the power i omega t d omega. Okay. So, then I see if I were to evaluate these two integrals, I see that I get the following function this is 1 by 2 pi sin 2 pi t minus sin pi t. Okay. So, then this will also be equal to sin pi t by 2 times sin sin 3 pi t by 2 divided by pi t by 2. Okay. So, after simplification, I see that the Shannon wavelet has the following form. So, if I were to plot these Shannon wavelets, if I were to plot psi of t versus t, if I were to plot this function, this function is an even function of t. Notice that the function is as follows. So, the function is an even function and looks like the following. Okay. So, then all I have to see is whether this, whether the Shannon wavelet and it is discrete, if I were to descri des describe the discrete version of this Shannon wavelet, are they orthonormal or not. Okay. So, that is this question that I have to answer. So, let us look at, let us look at psi of t. So, notice that psi of t is orthonormal to its integer translates. So, orthonormal to its integer translates. Okay. So, what I mean to say is that psi of t comma psi of t minus n is 1 by 2 pi times the inner product of psi hat with well when when we take the respective integer translates 
each translate is going to bring in a factor of e to the power i omega psi hat. Okay? So, I see that if I were to evaluate this inner product, I see that this, this is also equal to 1 by 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity psi hat e to the power i well i n omega times with a negative sign with times psi hat conjugate. Okay? So, so, the inner product is the function multiplied by its conjugate okay, d omega. So, then I, I know that this, this particular integral is 1 by 2 pi negative infinity to infinity psi hat omega square e to the power negative i and omega d omega. And then I know that this this square this square of this particular function is only going to be 1 in a certain range of omega namely from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. I get that this is 1 otherwise 0. So, I get that this is the following reduces to the following integral okay, because psi hat is is 1 in in on the interval i. Okay? So, I know that it is 0 otherwise. Okay? So, then now notice that this particular interval is nothing but the delta function, the delta function of 0 comma n. Okay? This is by the definition of the delta function. We described this definition in my discussion on Fourier transform. So, notice that, so hence my result follows I have shown here is that psi is orthonormal to its integer translates that is the inner product of psi with its integer translate is the delta function psi of 0 with n. Okay, so, then let us look at the corresponding discrete. So, let us now look at the corresponding discrete my discrete wavelet well discrete Shannon wavelet basis. Okay? So, I am going to again describe my discrete Shannon wavelet basis psi of m n of t to be by I am going to take a 0 to be half and I take my b 0 to be 1. So, my discrete basis is as follows for the continuous function I am going to replace I am going to replace my argument as follows. So, I scale and translate to get the following function as this is sin of sin of pi by 2 times 2 to the power negative m t minus n minus n times cos cos of 3 pi by 2 times times 2 to the power negative m times t minus n. Okay? So, I have just replaced my argument x with this argument 2 to the power negative m t minus n divided by divided by pi by 2 times 2 to the power negative m t minus n. Okay. So, then I see that this is going to be defined this particular definition is going to be defined in the interval it is going to be defined in the interval. I am going to replace the interval from of t to the interval of this argument. So, it is going to be defined in the interval from negative 2 to the power minus m plus 1 pi minus n comma negative 2 to the power minus m pi minus n union union the other interval. The other interval is So, union the other interval being 2 to the power negative n pi minus n comma 2 to the power negative m plus 1 pi minus n. Okay. So, then so, so then I have to show that this forms I have to show I have to show that this definition of psi m n forms forms an orthonormal 
orthonormal basis. Okay? So, if that is the case then the definition makes sense for the Shannon wavelet. Okay? Okay, so, then let us look at let us look at the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform the Fourier transform of psi m n. Let us look at the Fourier transform of psi m n. Let us say psi m n hat. So, I can easily calculate the Fourier transform to see that this is also 2 to the power 2 to the power m by 2 times e to the power negative i omega n 2 to the power m. If I have if I am given that my omega lies from the range 2 to the power negative m pi to the range 2 to the power negative m plus 1 pi. Okay? So, if that is the case otherwise it is 0 otherwise 0. Okay, so, so, I leave this as an exercise to the students to find that indeed the Fourier transform of psi m n the discrete functions are is this following function. So, this has already been done and I have already shown the result here. So, further so that is one result further check the students are asked to check the following result that that the the inner product of the Fourier transform psi m n with psi k l this is also 0. So, that can be easily done by taking the appropriate inner product of these Fourier transform of this discretized of this discrete version of the, the functions. Now, I know that this is also equal to the inner product of psi m n with psi k l. Okay? This is via my Parseval's my Parseval's relation. Okay? So, that follows via Parseval's relation that, that my inner products are equal in the transformed plane or in the physical plane. Okay? And since they are 0 in one plane they must be 0 in the other. Okay? So, so, notice well that can well notice the following. So, for, for m equals k notice the following inner product. So, I have that psi m n inner product with psi k l notice that this will be also equal to also equal to uh, well also equal to 1 by 2 pi in well 1 by 2 pi inner product of psi hat m n with psi hat m l. Okay? So, what I am trying to do here is that if I can show so so, if I can show that this inner product is 0 in the transformed plane, then I have got my result. I have got that for k not equal to l, the inner product is 0 in the physical plane. So, for m equal to n, this is for m not equal to k and for m equal to k, this inner product will be 1. So, so let us look at for m equal to k. Again, using my Parseval's relation, I see that this is also equal to the following inner product. Let us use the relation for the inner product as integral from negative infinity to infinity times 2 to the power negative m times e to the power negative i omega 2 to the power negative m times n minus l okay? times well times what is going what is well. So, so, times d omega. Okay? So, I have just used the definition above to come to this expression. Notice that this is going to be well if I were to simplify this further let me assume the following change of variables. So, assume my sigma to be 2 to the power negative m omega. So, sigma is negative 2 to the power m omega. I see that this integral is 1 by 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the power negative i sigma n minus l n minus l d sigma. 
and I know from the definition of delta function that this is also delta of n comma l. So, this is delta of n comma l. Okay. So, so what I have shown here is that well if m is equal to k then of course, these wavelets are the wavelets the way we have described these are orthonormal. Okay. So, I have shown here I have shown here is that my psi m n my wavelets are orthonormal. Okay. So, for m not equal to k students can check that the inner product will come out to be 0. Okay. So, these wavelets are orthonormal and hence the description of these discrete form of these wavelets makes sense. Okay. So, then in the next case in this next example I am going to now introduce as another wavelet namely the Dobechi wavelets. Now, Dobechi wavelets we will see that the, the special property of Dobechi wavelets is that we can describe how smooth or what, what sort of smoothness is is the wavelet that we prescribed that we want. Okay. So, the smoothness of the wavelet can be prescribed in this particular form of the wavelets. Okay. So, let us look at what is this construction. So, my, my Dobechi, Dobechi wavelets. Okay. Now, before I move ahead I would like to, to highlight to the students that for a very detailed for a very detailed description of Dobechi wavelets the students should refer should refer the following text wavelets wavelets and applications wavelets and applications by by Loknath Devnath Loknath Devnath Okay, this was published in Ber by Berkhauser in 2002. So, some of these ideas are taken from this references. Okay, so, let me, let me just highlight now the Dobechi wavelet. Okay, so, first of all Dobechi wavelets are a family, a family of discrete, they are a family of discrete orthonormal, ortho, orthonormal wavelets. So, they are a family of discrete orthonormal wavelets characterized characterized by maximal maximal vanishing moments. So, we can prescribe how many moments the wavelets should should be set equal to 0 and that will describe how smooth that particular wavelet is. So, that is characterized by maximum vanishing moments in a given in a given subdomain. Okay. So, maximum vanishing moments in a given subdomain subdomain of of the wavelets. Okay. So, of the wavelets psi of t. Okay. I call these subdomains as these are called as support. Okay. So, for a given support uh, if I can get maximal vanishing moments then those particular class of wavelets are known as the Dobechi wavelets. Okay, so, let us consider let us consider the construction of these wavelets first. So, let us consider a square integrable function f. Okay. So, now I am going to I am going to represent this function f so, the idea is as follows I, from, from this function f which is say any arbitrary square integrable function I am going to represent this function in terms of certain scaling functions. Now, we are going to look at some properties of those scaling functions namely I am going to generate a particular function known as the generating function which will describe these wavelets. So, now let us consider these square integrable functions. So, these functions can be represented let us say that they are represented represented by the scaling function they are represented by the scaling function phi of x 
they are represented by the scaling function phi of x by by the following form. So, f of x is square root 2 times summation n from negative infinity to infinity c n phi of 2 x minus n. So, I am using, so I am going to describe these scaling functions and I will use these definitions of scaling functions so that they are going to describe my Dovechi wavelets. So, so let us call this, we see that this, these are my discrete form of these wavelets with b0 equal to 1 and a0 equal to, well, well b0 and a0 equal to 1. So, I can write, rewrite this as follows. So, this is summation n from negative infinity to infinity times c n times phi of 1 comma n. So, I, where my phi of 1 comma n are these functions. Okay. So, so my c n, my c n can be found where my c n is the inner product of f with this, with this, with this, uh, with this functions, my scaling functions phi with this suitable inner product. Okay. So, then so, notice that now I have to first start to describe what are these scaling functions phi. Okay? So, let us say let us say that my scaling functions my phi n of x they satisfy that is satisfy the following dilation equation the following dilation equation. Okay? So, notice the idea is the same as what we have followed in the development of my discrete Haar wavelets, where we had described my dilation function and using that dilation function I describe the wavelet and hence the discrete wavelets. So, let us start describing this dilation function by the dilation equation. So, phi of n is square root 2 times summation n from negative infinity to infinity times c n phi of 2x minus n. Okay, so, so, this means that where I know that my, my, my c n's the coefficient c n's are sub inner product of phi with phi n comma 1 and c n the coefficients are such that well the coefficients are such that that the square sum of these coefficients are finite. So, essentially I have described my scaling functions so that they are under this class of square integrable functions. Okay? So, my c n's can be appropriate, appropriately re retrieved from this inner product. Okay? So, let me call this, this definition of f by 1 and let me call this dilation equation by 2. Okay, so, let us let's take, let me now start taking the Fourier transform of 1. Okay. So, let us take let us take the Fourier let us take the Fourier transform let us take the Fourier transform the discrete Fourier transform of 1. Okay. So, if I do that I get the right hand side is the Fourier transform of f the left hand side becomes 1 by square root 2. So, that is well, 1 by 2 brings in a factor of 1 by square root 2. Summation, so this is a discrete Fourier transform. Okay? So, summation n from negative infinity to infinity c n e to the power negative i n omega by 2 times phi hat of omega by 2. So, that is the discrete version of the Fourier transform. So, let me call this as the function m hat of omega by 2 times phi hat of omega by 2. Okay, so, I see that I am going to now, I am going to now look at this particular function with which I have defined this discrete Fourier transform. So, where my function, where my function, the associated generating function A generating function m hat of omega, this is given by 1 by square root 2 pi that follows 
from this definition above. So, m hat omega is 1 by square root 2 pi summation n from negative infinity to infinity c n e to the power negative i omega n. Okay. So, that is my, my generating function m hat of omega. Now, it again please students asked again to refer to the text which I have which I have listed by Loknath Devnath. Now, mainly that there are certain properties of this associated generating functions again listed in this text. So, I am going to use let me call this as 3. So, let me just highlight some of some of the properties some of the properties that are satisfied by this associated generating generating function. Okay. So, I see that I see that m of m hat of omega is a trigonometric polynomial, it is a trigonometric polynomial okay. and it also it also satisfies that m hat of omega at omega equal to 0, if I plug omega equal to 0 and use the definitions of c n described earlier m hat of 0 is 1 and I also see that m hat of pi is 0. I see further I see that m hat of omega of this square of this absolute value of m hat omega plus m hat omega plus pi the absolute value they satisfy this equation this is equal to 1. Again all these all these relations are proved in detail in this particular text. So, I am going to use some of these results to give the construction of this particular Dobechi wavelet. Okay. Okay. So, then so then let us look continue looking at this expression 3. So, what I have is now so what we need we want we want to construct the Dobechi wavelet and to do that we want that we want that psi hat of omega is let us say n minus 1 n minus 1 times continuously n minus 1 times continuously differentiable n minus 1 times continuously differentiable if now so this is the this is the requirement that we want so that we are able to construct the Dobechi wavelet of the required vanishing moments. So let us say there are n minus 1 vanishing moments and if that is the case we want that this psi hat of omega must satisfy must satisfy the following moment must satisfy the following moment equation it satisfies the moment equation given by psi hat psi hat k of 0 is 0. So, let us say for k equals 0 1 2 to n minus 1 the the derivative of this this wavelet at 0 is 0 and now so if if that is the case what we want is 